what day of the hunt is this? Four? Day four. We finally have a plant or somewhat of a plant. We finally found a bull that got marshaled hard to ticket, right? We got the one. We got the one? We keep we got the one. So now it's just a matter of fact. They were up just on a piece, just on the other side of a private. And we found the cows this morning. Well, we can see about six cows. We, we're thinking it's got to be that herd, but the big bull he wants to shoot wasn't the herd bull last night. He, he got chased off by the herd bull. But anything can happen when the rut's going on. He could very easily have the cows or be close by. So we're just trying to turn them up again and figure out where exactly they're going to go. And hopefully they stay low. They're really low right now. I think they're just on public right now. I mean, all we can do in this situation is do everything we can do. And I was telling these guys last night that bull's going to have to make a mistake, obviously, to get killed and come down. But I've seen it happen a lot. I've seen it happen a lot. One, one thing I can tell you for sure, all the elk I've ever hunted in my life, elk come downhill at night for whatever reason, to go feed, to go rut, to go whatever. They come downhill. And then in, in the morning, they go uphill. And so even if we don't get them killed this morning or get see them, I think we're going to watch this whole area. And, and uh, I think if we stick to this plan, to this bull, in the next couple days, he's going to come down and be on the public during shooting light, and we're going to get a shot. I think the overcast last night helped us a little bit. You know, held them here more than they, so they didn't have the light to travel. Yeah, it's been windy, it's super been, windy all night, and elk don't like to don't like the wind for whatever reason. I don't care that much for the wind. I don't either. Yeah, so. If it's windy, I just want to lay in the, your trailer. It was hard getting him out this morning. It was it was a challenge, but you know the wind, everything it, that that has a lot to do with how far a shot we take too. Should we call him in close? Yeah, you know, if you can get him within about, I don't know, 10 or 15 yards. Okay. I won't, I won't worry at all about the wind. Okay, that would be the plan. You know, you did that a couple of days ago. <laughs> Guys, if you've been watching this series, this series from Utah, or been watching the whole series, we appreciate it. This is, I know this is not like been the most entertaining footage we've ever captured. I mean, some of it is. But this is the program. We sit in glass and try to find that one bull we want to go after, and then we, the hunt's on. So that's all we've been doing is just glassing a ton of country, trying to find find is, the right one. Is that him right there? Cut, cut to the phone scope. Is that him right there that you've got in your scope? In your, is this him right here? Right here. Okay. So this is a little bit of an interesting scenario. We're trying to get up this hill to this other glassy knob. And we got these two giant trees blown over in the road. But this tree fell that way. This tree fell that way. I wonder if somebody purposely pulled them down so no one could get up there. What do you think, Martin? Those guys that drove by this early this morning. Pulled them over. Those, they had their side by side, two four wheelers. First ones up the road today. They weren't over where we were, no. so they had to go this way. Are we having a conspiracy theory hour with Martin right now? <laughs> I'm doing my stories. Yeah. Like <laughs> Eric gives Martin a hard time because he always has theories about reasons why things happen. Like if there's a buck on the trail camp, give us one. Or do you remember one? There was a mountain lion I got on camera, and he's going up the trail kind of quick. You can see he's moving quickly. He's looking uphill, and I know the layout of the land, and uphill from there, there is a good game trail. So I said, looks like he's kind of like watching that game trail, like he might be parallel on a deer. And when they, those two trails meet, he's going to jump on that deer. He ain't That's thinking, him. he ain't trying. Yeah, I, I like it. Imagine. I like it. I think somebody pulled these down so we can't get up to the spot. I don't know if they could have blown over. It's been super windy the last day or two, but man, we've seen some nice bulls today. Didn't find the one we were looking for, but that's what our plan was to come up here and get a different vantage point to glass back in on this basin or on this peak. We think he might have wrapped around. Who knows? They're definitely bugling and rutting around. I think we might have to go on another hike and try to call one in. What do you guys think? Hear that? Just heard a bull bugle. Hmm. Well, unless you want to go get your chainsaw. You have a chainsaw? Yeah. 
maybe, maybe we'll spend the afternoon cutting them, but. So we are uh, midday. We just wanted to come shoot the rifle, make sure it's on. We've been packing it around in the side by side. I think it's important, if, even if you just you know travel by truck a few hours, you want eat bow, rifle, whatever, you want to shoot that thing to make sure it hasn't gotten bumped, especially along the way during the hunt. We've been covering on some, driving on some pretty bumpy roads, so we're just gonna make sure it's on at 100, and then we're gonna go find a bull to actually do the real thing on, okay? Where'd you hit, Mark? Just right in the black. Well, more of the brown. Well, yeah. that's what we're trying to kill is something brown. See, but I think Martin and I, we've got it grouped up. Casey, Martin, me. No, I think this is, I think I. Yeah. That's pretty good yeah. consistent group off that freaking bipod in the, uh, in the uh, wind. I mean, really, if you think about it, we're, we're already turned up a couple of clicks. And I think with what we're figuring for our, for our ballistics, if we're gonna reach out there a little bit, which I'm sure we are, I think we're pretty good. Get that bugle, let's just hear it. Give, that's it. <laughs> Finally made it back in this canyon and we're glassing up a lot of elk. What, three bulls? Three bulls. Three bulls and a couple cows, so good start. And it's still pretty early. We got a few hours. Trying to find the big one still. A lot of good bulls, like a ton of good bulls, but not a lot of wow bulls. So we're gonna find him now though. So the reason why I'm running the camera and Martin's glassing is because we glassed for about a half an hour and Martin found about 10 elk and I found zero. So he said we should reverse change roles today. So that's what we're doing. So we've been trying to get into this piece, which is, it shows it's a trailhead on Onyx, but it goes through a chunk of private property. And we went to the private yesterday to try to get through there and there was a gate across it. And we never like to risk it. So we didn't go in there last night. Came. And uh, this today, this afternoon, we called. We called the National Forest Service. Yep. National Forest Forest Service, and they said yes. They've been having some trouble with that, and that we were legal to drive through there, park at the trailhead, and obviously stay on the, the public and not go on the private. But finally made it, and it opens up a bunch of new country for us, which is cool. We're finding mature bulls every day. Everywhere we go, we find at least one mature bull. So I feel like after this hunt, we're going to go back to our over-the-counter hunts and it's gonna be tough <laughs> it's gonna be real tough for us we're just gonna keep glassing away guys I apologize I keep keep saying this but I know this series isn't full of a lot of excitement just because this is what this hunt calls for we have to glass and find something we want to go after we feel like that's the most time efficient the most efficient thing we can do with our time is just to cover as much country as we can look over a bunch of elk and find the one that Mark wants to go kill. I think standards are, might be going down a little bit tomorrow. With only a couple days left. Yeah, maybe. But we're we're hard at it right now. We're trying to find that three. What's the number? What's the number? Three sixty. Any like anything over three sixty is a shooter at this point. I agree. I mean that sounds ridiculous, right? Like three sixty. Most guys, I would say ninety eight percent of people that hunt elk will go through their whole career and never kill a three sixty bull. They're here. We've seen them, handfuls of them and we just gotta find the right one that we can get into and kill.